everybody, welcome back to Art A La Carte. Today's tutorial video has been highly requested by many of you. So we're doing another cat drawing tutorial. I actually have quite a few videos on how to draw cats. In fact, I put them all together in a playlist. So if you don't get enough feline fun in this episode, check out the playlist below. Before I get into how to draw this very cool cat face at a three quarter angle, let me just give you a couple of tips. One is that learning art generally does doesn't come overnight. It comes with a lot of practice. If you see an artist that's really good and maybe your art isn't at that level, first of all, don't get frustrated. Know that they were once at your level too and they just kept practicing. So you keep practicing and you'll build your level up as well. If you're trying to draw something and you find it a little too hard and it's frustrating, instead of giving up, try something a little bit easier, get comfortable with that, and then come back and try the more challenging thing. So in this video, I'm going to be drawing a cat head looking at a three quarter angle, which can be a little bit challenging. So maybe first just try drawing this profile view of a cat head first, get comfortable with that, and then move on to the three quarters head. If you look at this drawing that I've done of a profile cat head, you're going to see two main shapes. One is just a circle shape for the head and then kind of this wedge shape for the muzzle. Taking a subject, taking the subject that you want to draw and breaking it into simple shapes can really help you get that onto paper. To start off this drawing, you'll see once again, I'm using some basic shapes. I'm using a circle shape for the head and then a smaller circle shape to block in kind of where the muzzle is. Now, once I have that shape down, you're gonna see a curved line that I do from the top of the head down the side. And it's not dead center, it's kind of wrapped around three quarters. I'm going to use this as a facial guide line to let me know kind of which direction the head is looking. After I got these three shapes in, so the circle for the head, circle for the muzzle, and the guideline, now I'm gonna start blocking in the face. Because once I have the face blocked in, then I can build the head in around it. But I'm not gonna focus on minute details, just blocking it in. So for the nose, I'm using a rounded upside down triangle. I'm using a basic kind of W shape for the mouth. Cat's eyes can be a little bit tricky, so here is kind of my quick guide. You'll see that the top lid of the cat eye is pretty sharp in its angle. It's coming up and it's coming down. Where the angle of the bottom lid is very circular. It doesn't have that really high arch to it. Another thing to think about is the pupil shape, which is not circular like in a human, kind of lemony shape. I'll get more into coloring later on in this video, but a quick tip to coloring well, pretty much any eye, is that there's going to be a little bit of shadow up towards the top part of the eye, which is cast down from the upper eyelid. Also, adding little spots of highlights can really add life to your drawing. Something to look for when you're drawing a three-quarter angle face is the distance between the eyes and the nose. So as the face turns, you're gonna have a little bit of distortion. The eye that's farthest away from you is going to look like it's drawn closer to the nose bridge and might appear a little bit more narrow. A great way to study this is to look in the mirror and turn your head slightly from one side to the other and look at how the distance between your eye and your nose appears in the mirror. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and block in the rest of the cat head. And again, I'm going in for basic shapes, kind of roundedy triangle shapes for the ears. Fur can be challenging to draw. Think of it as an overall shape, not individual pieces of hair or fur, and draw them in clumps. Also watching that the clumps aren't exactly the same. Some of them might be smaller, some of them might be bigger, some of them might be whooshing out this way where some are whooshing down that way. Um, kind of put a little of variance with them. Sometimes I'll just fill up pages full of fur line marks. If I feel that my fur is too stiff or not looking real, I'll just practice fur. This is where reference photos are really going to help you out because even, even the smallest change in the way the cat's sitting can change or affect how the fur looks. So research. Now that I have my sketch done, I'm going to start inking this in. At first, I was going to do the whole inking first and then add coloring, but after I finished the face, I decided to jump into coloring first and then add the outlining later. You can do either or, it just depends on your personal preference or how you're feeling at the moment. It's your drawing, you can do whatever you want. Now for coloring, I'm going to use alcohol-based markers. You could use crayons, color pencils, paints, just depends on what kind of paper you've drawn on. So when I started drawing, I had grabbed just some random cardstock that I had 
And as you can see, if you look really, really closely at the eye, you'll see that the eye lines are not super crisp. It's kind of feathering out. And the reason that is, is because my paper isn't super smooth. There's a slight texture to it. Think of it as a sponge. When you drop water on a dry sponge, that water doesn't just sit on top of it. It soaks in and kind of spreads out. If you're drawing with markers or a pen or something and you find that your stuff is kind of feathering or bleeding out, it's probably because your paper is a little bit rough. Rough paper is great for things like color pencils that want to grab onto something. But if you're using inks and you want a really crisp line, then you're going to want to find a smoother paper. I want to make my cat a really dark chocolatey tabby. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with the lightest color first. I'm going to cover him completely with this color. Now this technique works great with markers, watercolor, even color pencils. With those mediums it's always easier to add darker colors onto lighter colors but it's a bit more challenging to lighten a already darkened color. So I always start with the darkest stuff first. If you're using a medium like crayon which doesn't layer very well you're going to want to plan out what parts you want dark and what parts you want light because they don't play well together. Or if you're using something like acrylic or gouache that's super, super opaque, it don't matter because you can just do whatever you want with those. <laughs> now it's time to go in and add in my details for the stripes. At first, this used to stress me out because I really wanted both sides to match. If I made a stripe over one eye, I wanted the other stripe to look exactly the same. But then I noticed the more I researched cats, their face patterns are not symmetrical. That means they they might follow slightly the same design, but they're not the same. They're like sisters. They're not identical twins. And a lot of times they can just do whatever they want. So don't stress out about it. But of course, looking at reference photos can really help you understand how the patterns might go. Here's another pro tip for coloring. Have you ever had an art supply like a marker? When you color, it leaves those streak lines and you're like, I hate the streak lines. Well, use the streak lines for the betterment of your drawing. When you're coloring, follow the pattern of how the fur would lie. So instead of just coloring side to side, I'm sweeping it out how the fur would grow. So any streak lines are going to add to that appearance of texture in the fur. You'll also see with the stripy lines that they're not precise lines because as the fur grows, some of the lighter fur is going to mix in with some of the darker fur. So it's kind of jaggedy and zigzaggy and adds fun for the texture there as well. Lastly, I'm going to add some shading to my drawing. Now, when I was first learning art, one of my art teachers told me that when you shade something or add a shadow, you think of where your light source is, and then you shade everything that is on the opposite side of that. And while that is true, that's only half of the most important thing that you need to know in shading. So, of course, you want to know where your light source is because you don't want to put shadows on where you know, the light is shining. You also want to think about dimension, things to push back and bring forward. When you want to push something back, add a little shadow. When you want to bring something forward, add a little highlight. So you'll see around the bridge of his nose and around his mouth, I've kept those really light. But where I want to push it back on the farther side of the face, I've added a little bit more shadow. So play around with that and see how it works. Okay, so here's my last pro tip for coloring. Don't think that you have to use just a darker color of the color that you're using to shade or a gray. Try a variety of different colors. My favorite color to shade with is a purple, especially with something that is kind of orange or yellow. It looks fabulous. Now that I have everything colored in, I'm going to add in the final inked in lines. If you're looking to draw something more on the realistic side, skip the outline. Outlining something always flattens your drawings. But if you want a more illustrated or cartoony look, then add those outlines. If you decide to outline your fur, Try outlining in small little curved jagged lines instead of one continuous line all the way around. That'll also help you get that fur appearance to your line. So those are my tips and tricks in drawing a cat face and adding color to that. Hopefully you found something new. If you learned something in this tutorial, let me know in the comment section below. Or if you have a tip or a suggestion that you use, let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and are wanting to continue your art journey adventures with me, you can check out this playlist here. Also, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you'll get notified every single time I upload a new video. I just want to say a big thanks to everyone who has been commenting, 
liking, sharing my videos with your friends and family. It has been a, such a huge help to my channel and I appreciate it so, so much. And as always, God bless you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Continue drawing, being creative, and we'll see you in another art video. Bye-bye.